are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Strange afternoon in College Park. The score's already off the scoreboard. Maryland goes down 61-59, lost two games in a few days, total of five points. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne, that's Mason. Bruce will be here in a moment. Mason, the trips climbed all the way back and then just, just couldn't get ahead. They had numerous attempts to do so. What did you see out there? Yeah, I think I counted it somewhere around 20 possessions uh, with this game within two points from about the 16-minute mark uh, in the second half all the way down towards the four-minute mark. And then obviously it carried on from there uh, just within that scoring margin. But when you come back in games, you have to win when, when that opportunity is there. You have to take the lead. Then generally you have to hold it. Uh, Maryland just few. I mean, they might have led for five possessions in the entire second half. They did not particularly shoot well. Bruce said it was going to be a battle to 60. I thought it might be to 65. As he said, one team got to 60. It wasn't Maryland. This is a, a blow to the overall season. It was a tough one today. Uh, we're going to have Bruce on in a second and talk about all of the Maryland classic ball players who came in today. It's a lefty Grizzell uh, commemoration day for this season, and that's probably the high point. It's, you just don't know where the points are going to come from. Jamira 19, Dante had 16. It just obviously wasn't enough. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. We'll be back in a moment after this word from Rick Jacklish. Hey, Rick Jacklin. Who's your favorite number one term? Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore. Really? Now, come on, you know. Rakeem Jarrett's always been my favorite number one. Hey, Rock Jarrett, who's your number one? The Rick Jacklin's Law Group. Why? Awesome trial results, unbelievable customer service, plus you've taken great care of my mom over the last 20 years. Just some of the reasons that the Jacklin's Law Group has been voted the number one personal injury trial firm in the entire USA. If you're hurt, call the Big Dogs. 855-BIG-DOG-1. Back on the unhappy court here at Xfinity Center, Bruce, boy, it was a tough one. Maryland, Maryland's in a hole now, yeah, record -wise. You know, I've been, I've been saying they need 12 conference wins, which means at this point they have to go 9-3. and three. It seems problematic for that to happen. But listen, this was a, this was a strange game. Really a strange game. 44 to 32 at halftime, and Michigan State won the game scoring 17 in the second half. I mean, that's almost impossible. But look, Maryland fought hard. They just, you know, I think that uh, I think that the scoring from uh, number two, I can't. Walker. Uh, no, our number two. Oh, ja Jahari Long. Jahari Long. He hit the three threes, and that was kind of like the juice that we needed. But we just couldn't get over the hump. I think Mason and myself counted 15 times in a row we had a chance to take the lead, and we couldn't do it. And finally, we did. And at that point, you thought it would, but all of a sudden, we allowed Michigan State to drive the bucket, and it was a game that goes either way. And that last play, we had a timeout left. Maybe Jameer was going for a timeout when he lost the ball. I don't know. Lost the ball. It rolled out of bounds. So many guys Wait. got in close, got their shot blocked. The I want to ask you a question, Lee. Yes. With th about 35 seconds left, we could have started to foul them when we were down by two, and we didn't. 
What was your take on that? You know, it turned out to be he was right. It worked. The use of timeouts in this game was a bit odd. Uh, Maryland calls two timeouts very early in the game, trying to stem that initial rush. They don't call a timeout to the very end. Michigan State let Maryland come all the way back. Didn't call a timeout till there was a, a minute to go. It was a strangely coached game. Nobody could find a shooting rhythm. It's It was brutal at some point. Physically brutal. Fouls weren't called. It's just a, a strange game. And you look at through the whole game, and of course, say if you made one more basket, the whole thing turns out to be. And the, this has not been the year when Maryland's made that last shot. There's this highlight reel of Cowan making shots, of Mello making shots, Jameer Young making shots, not this year. So that's on the bad side. On the good side, as you look off to your right, it's Maryland royalty as a celebrating lefty Brazil. And you see Buck Williams and Albert King and Jeff Baxter and Derek and Cedric Lewis over there, and Tony Massenberg, and just the whole host of characters that were the stars uh, of our younger days. It was a great turnout. Gary, of course, was here. Scott Van Pelt was here. But uh, none of that could take us over the top. But I tell you what, beware Wednesday night against Iowa. Iowa is a team that scores a lot of points. They give up a lot of points. It could be a game that we win out there. We haven't done too well in Iowa, have we? But no, this is the fifth game that we lost to Michigan State in a while. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Since Anthony Cowan won? I, I guess the game you went to. The game I went to in Michigan that yeah. they're still but, Izzo's still crying about. I'm going to bring up one more thing. I know you want to go in and ask Izzo some questions. Right. If, if you look at the game as a total on Maryland's side, other than the fact that Maryland had trouble getting back on defense, which sometimes that happens, it looked like Maryland could not find an offensive play to run. There's nothing special that you said 15 times to touch the ball. You've watched a ton, you've coached a bit. Would you have looked for one or two different things to do? Well, I'm sure Willard did, but they weren't there. I mean, Jameer, they, they did a good job on him, even though he still scored 19. Every time he got a pick, it, it was almost double team. And uh, it's something they'll prepare for better when we go back to Michigan State. And no, I'm not looking forward to that game. But uh, they'll be better prepared. I'm not sure what Izzo did. I'm not smart enough for that. But they did a good job slowing us down, slowing down Jameer, keeping him below 30. You know, and if he would have had his normal game, you know, with 25 points, they win. But he didn't. You know what? It wasn't his fault. We lost. I mean, it's simple. And the game was just an odd game. The game played itself. When it got to a, like 58, 60 to 58, it was a cat and mouse game the rest of the way. And look at the final. I mean, it's impossible to be that low when at halftime it was 44 to 32. It's almost impossible. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, not not the greatest uh, record overall, but it's not over yet. And with that, we're going to call it a day here from the Experience Saturday. The trip's going to 61.